We were recently introduced to an app that lets you use your personal phone to record real life objects and then use them in your Unity 3D projects. Now this goes way beyond simple video recordings and actually enables you to scan 3D objects using just your phone's camera feed. Using this app, which is called Displayland, we were able to generate a fairly realistic 3D scene in Unity 3D from just a couple of hours of scanning out in the real world. You can pair that with the days of modeling and texturing that would be required in a traditional development environment, and you quickly start to see the value of the Displayland app. So what we did when we heard about this technology was quickly start scanning everything around us to see how well this actually worked. We've worked with similar applications before that were just bulky and difficult to use, so we were naturally skeptical from the start. However, when we went through the process of creating our first 3D model, we were completely convinced. The first thing that I did was pull my chair into the middle of my room, walked around it just twice using the app, and this was actually the result an actual chair that responded to actual physics when I pulled it into Unity. Now with it being my first scan, it took me about 30 minutes to learn how to use the app, complete the scan, and pull it into Unity to start playing with it. Needless to say, I was amazed by how well this worked. Our main project though was going to be scanning a large outdoor environment. We went out and started scanning everything from little tile textures to complete parking lots. Along the way, we learned a lot about which real world surfaces scan well and which ones don't. We've made mistakes and jumped over all of the hurdles so that you won't have to. And today we're going to show you exactly how you can get started. 3D scanning has been around since the 60s and since then has continued to use some combination of lasers, light detection, and point cloud triangulation mapping to generate 3D computer copies of the real world. Now more recently, we have seen specialized depth sensing cameras such as the Intel RealSense as well as the use of high quality cameras such as the Nikon 5000 DSLR. The downside of course is that you would need to take hundreds of pictures from every single angle of your target and then import them into some software like Metashape from Agisoft to get a decent model. Now this takes hours even when you know exactly what you're doing. So fast forward a little further to right now and we're starting to see apps like Displayland blow everybody away. Now, when it comes to 3D scanning, there are generally five metrics that you should care about. You have the output accuracy, the speed to actually generate the output, whether or not this is actually true 3D output that we're getting, texturing capability, and finally price. Now, what Ubiquity 6 has done with Displayland is remarkable because they hit all five of these metrics fairly well. If I was going to give a rating of how Displayland performs in each metric, it would probably be about four stars in accuracy, four stars in speed, five stars in the 3D output, four stars in texturing, and of course five stars on price since all we need is the phone that we use every day anyway. However, because of the complex nature of this problem, there's one metric that hasn't even been considered being posted, and that is ease of use. And with Displayland, we can now start introducing this as something that we care about when creating 3D scans. I would give Displayland a rating of 4 stars on this metric as well. From the front page of the app you can see the 3D scans that people around the world have created and to look through those you can simply swipe up. To create your own 3D scan, all you need to do is click the purple plus button at the bottom middle of the screen. From there you can sort of kickstart your process of creating your own 3D scan. And that's where we're going to start right now. So once you have an idea of what you want to scan, you simply point your phone towards that item. You don't want to wave your arm around. You want to keep your phone at your chest and simply walk around the target slowly and smoothly. This is the recommended way to conduct the 3D scans by Ubiquity 6, the creators of Displayland. So you can see here that I'm 3D scanning the staircase, this brick staircase, and all I'm doing is walking back and forth. You see the point cloud generate as you walk around your target, and it's going to end up picking up a lot of things in the background that you don't necessarily care about. You don't need to worry about that though because later on, you can actually go in and edit your app and crop out the mesh that you actually care about. As you're conducting your 3D scan, you'll see a bar at the bottom of your screen start to progress. You'll see a tag that says MIN, which is the minimum amount of detail that's required before you can actually upload your scan to the servers for processing. 
So once you reach that minimum threshold, you can actually stop capturing and wait for your scan to upload. After your 3D scan has finished uploading, you can go open it in the Displayland app. And whenever you open it by clicking edit, you might see that it looks like this sort of nuclear wasteland where everything is stretched out away from the focal point, which is the scan that you actually care about. So what you do is you zoom in to the part of the scan that you actually care about. And from there, you'll want to sort of crop out that area. When it comes to looking at this from the app, you don't want to see everything else in the background. So you can press the crop button at the bottom left of the screen, tap on the cube that shows up, and then use regular gesture controls to actually crop out the part of the 3D mesh that you care about. This is going to get rid of all of the extraneous vertices that surround the focal point of your 3D scan. If you're not completely happy with the scan that you end up getting after it processes in the cloud, you might want to consider approaching the scan a little bit differently. Maybe you walk around it in the opposite direction. Maybe you start from a further direction and work your way in as you walk around the object. Or maybe you start further in and then work your way outside. So there's a couple of different methods that you could try, but Displayland actually has a help page that might offer some helpful tips. You also want to take into consideration different types of objects and materials that don't scan very well. For instance, transparent, refractive, or reflective materials such as liquid, glass, or metal might actually have a difficult time being scanned. Objects that are more diffuse with a lot of different detail in their texture are going to be much easier to scan. We also found that by adding just a few more seconds to your scan can make a big improvement in the output quality of that 3D model. To test this, we found a fire hydrant that we wanted to scan at three different quality levels. The first quality level would be a 15 second scan, which ended up not being successful because we couldn't get enough detail in that amount of time. Then we did a 30 second scan and a one minute scan and we were able to quickly compare those results after the scans were finished uploading. The 60 second scan has some more detail, although it might be subtle, such as the chain hanging in front, which is more visible in the 60 second scan than it is in the 30 second scan. When you're ready to move your 3D model from the application into Unity, the first step is to go to the 3D scans preview page on Displayland and click the arrow towards the bottom right hand of the screen. From there, you can click the download 3D mesh button and then choose to send the OBJ 3D mesh link. Now, once you've downloaded the OBJ file, you would wanna open it up in some 3D editor, such as Maya or Blender. Because there isn't native support for Unity 3D from Displayland, we have to actually go in and cut out the section of the model that we care about. This only takes about 30 seconds per model, so it's not too big of a barrier. And then once we've cut out the section that we care about, we can go ahead and export that as an FBX file or an OBJ file, whatever you're comfortable with. And then we can import that into Unity. From this point, if you want to follow along, you can go to our description and download the zip file link, which contains all of our 3D scans from this video. You can also find the GitHub link and download the entire project. And that would also be a good starting point. Once you have your OBJ file or your FBX file, you can just drag that into your Unity 3D project. I recommend creating a models folder so that you can organize your models accordingly. It's really as easy as that. Once your model is imported into Unity, you can drag your model into your scene view. And just like that, you have a fully lit model that can be hooked up with physics and manipulated however you want. Right now, we're going to demonstrate the ability to add responsive physics to your scene, and then we're going to drop a character controller into the scene and walk around. Adding physics is just as easy as adding lighting. Simply click on the model and add a mesh collider. To test physics, we can drop several physics objects onto the model and see how they react with the model. We would expect our physics objects to fall along the shape of the model. We can also add a character controller to the scene and walk around. This gives us a good first person view of what we actually saw out in the real world. It also highlights the fact that while these models may not be completely perfect, it shows how easy it is to get started without any modeling expertise. We actually think Displayland is a great option for rapid prototyping. 
You can visualize your idea without fully committing to paying somebody to actually create your scene for you. If you don't feel like your models are production ready, you'll at least have a good idea of what you want in your production project. From there, if you wanted to, you could pay a 3D modeler to recreate the scene that you created with Displayland. If you guys are excited to start rapid prototyping with Displayland, let us know what you're thinking of creating in the comments below. We're definitely excited to see what ideas you guys have when it comes to this style of development. And don't forget, to get started today, just go into our description and click on the Displayland link. Subscribe to the channel if you guys want more of this content. Don't forget to like and share this video with somebody that you know who's getting into game development. But as always guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.